Hello, welcome to another edition of Capra Comparison Picks. I'm Rand. Today I'll be giving you the Capra Comparison Picks for UFC Vegas 59. More prelim fights. This is going to be a quick show because I wasn't even going to do it. Because look at these crazy odds. They're like, what is this? Is this Bellator? Come on, really? It's not even fun. It's not even fun to... There's no Capra... There's no comparison. Everybody... It's just... But I didn't invest all the time watching the videos, writing down stuff, doing my research, doing in-depth looks through Instagram and all that just to not do it. So I'm going to do this, but I'm going to fly through it because obviously everybody knows the sides that everybody's taking. It's not even, you know, why the show is kind of like it's the moot point is that how you say it moot point it's a moot point <laughs> i don't know if you say that right but whatever so let's bang this out real quick be sure to check out the video i did yesterday which was a lot more competitive than this stupid show here with these three stupid fights one-sided fights all of them but uh i will give contrarian thought I guess if you can say it, contrarian thought on these. So playing a little bit of the devil advocate on these ridiculous line, wide lines. They're underneath that cloth, that cloth right there. That under mom's bamboo stuff, bamboo silverware or whatever. Bamboo cutlery. Okay, so here we go. Let's get into this welterweight fight between Takashi Sato, 10. That's his nickname, 10. Huh. So it goes uh, Stephen Ocho Peterson, which means eight. Then there's a Chinese girl. Her name is, forgot, but her nickname is nine. And now we got Takashi Sato, 10. That's right. Takashi Sato, 10, is taking on Brian Pooh Bear Battle. That's a ridiculous name because his last name is Battle. You think you'd make a play on the last name being like aggressive. Battle. When you think of a battle, you think of a fight. But he went with the name, his nickname Pooh Bear. Okay, Pooh Bear. Is it, isn't that uh, that one uh, that one guy that the heavyweight that does the Chris Barnett? Isn't isn't that his nickname too? Pooh Bear, the guy that does the spinning jump kicks, but he's only like 5'8", 245 pounds or something like that. You know what I'm talking about. I think it's Chris Barnett. Doesn't his nickname Pooh Bear as well? It doesn't matter. Whatever. So, uh, let's, let's break this down. Starting with the favorite in Brian Battle. This He is a um, ultimate fighter champion. He uh, made his UFC debut two fights ago after he won the, won the Ultimate Fighter. Um, he beat In the Ultimate Fighter, he, he beat uh, Andre Petrovsky, which is a very good win. He beat him by Ninja Choke, round two. Good on him. Andre Petrovsky is Henzo Gracie. He's, he's a phenom. He's, I think he's, he's, he's good. And uh, Brian Battle beat him by Ninja Choke in the Ultimate Fighter. Um, after that, he had his UFC debut against... There's a feline. No, I didn't say feline. I said phenom. Mean phenomenal. Phenomenal. Sorry. No kitties. Um, then he made his UFC debut against another uh, Ultimate Fighter, Gilbert Urbina. Same Ultimate Fighter house. He got the rear naked choke round two there. And then his second fight in the UFC was against another person out of the same Ultimate Fighter house in Trey Sean Gore. Beat him unanimous decision. I would like to say he um, also has uh, some nice amateur wins against people that you've heard their names. In the amateurs, this is back in 2018, so not hella long ago, but not recent either. Um, he beat Cody Brundage by split decision in amateurs, and he beat Impa Kasangane. That's an, another known name throughout the UFC. Beat him by unanimous decision. Both those wins happened in 2018 when he was still an amateur. He does have uh, 
one pro loss that happened against this guy named Nicholas Martino. Nicholas Martino beat him with an arm bar in round one. And I checked out this guy, Nicholas Martino. He's not good. His, his pro record is four and six now. Four and six record. Beat, the, beat Brian Battle, I think it happened in like 2019. And that's his one loss for Brian Battle. But uh, Brian Battle now coming down a weight class, coming dropping down to 170, it's a welterweight fight. He trains out of uh, South Carolina. He, uh, according to Tapology, he's North Carolina, Charlotte, the highest stand MMA. But on Instagram, he's been rocking over at Carolina Combat and at Modern Warrior MMA, which is in Rock Hill, South Carolina. So I'm gonna go with what I see on Instagram because that's Tapology. Sometimes they don't keep keep up to date with what these fighters change in gyms. Sim put simply, you know. Um, Brian Battle will have a nice three-inch height advantage and a four-inch reach advantage over ten Takashi Sato. Brian Battle also younger, 27 years old for. Brian Battle, Takashi Sato, 32. Now let's talk about the underdog here in Takashi Sato. Um, I'm gonna try to find some sort of contrarian point of view. Takashi Sato, 16 and five, way more experience in the cage. Pro experience, UFC experience, all that experience. He's training out of a if I, I'm not throwing shade on Carolina Combat. I just don't know anybody down there that's training. Kai Sato, training out of Kill Cliff, AK, well, used formerly known as Sanford MMA down in Florida, with killers such as Vincente Luque, also on this card. Mickey Gall, eh, not a killer, but still. Herbert Burns, um, Andre Fialho, and Mark Andre Barrio, who is. And the Instagram seems like Mark Andre Barrio, Power Bar, is the one that he's training most closely with, but he does have photos with all those people I just mentioned. But Mark Andre Barrio definitely has photos or little video segments of him actually striking. And Mark Andre Barrio is, uh, I believe, holding pads or wearing gear or something, if I remember correctly. I didn't get too deep into the Instagram, but. Uh, I do like that Takashi Sato is fighting out of Hill Cliff FC, Hill Cliff Fight Club. Um, Takashi Sato coming off two back-to-back -back losses. He lost to Gunnar Nelson. Gunnar Nelson's no joke, dude. He's all right. Miguel Baeza by Arm Triangle, round two. Miguel Baeza, Carmel Thunder. I know he's on a decline as of recently, but at one time I had him up. He was my original unranked contender pick, but then he's got back to back, he's on a two fight losing skit, I do believe. So I replaced him with a different welterweight, I forget who, but before that, Takashi Sato took care of Jason Witt also on this card. Check out last night's show I did, where I cover that fight. Or I, yeah, and um, Takashi Sato took care of him, ground and pound, 48 seconds of round one, but Jason Witt has been known to be chinny, chinny, chin, chin. Um, and prior to that, he lost to Bilal Muhammad. Bilal Muhammad, phenomenal wrestler, phenomenal fighter. I mean, is, is Bilal Muhammad, is he in the top? Did he break into the top five? I'm not sure, but definitely a ranked fighter. Um, and before that, he beat Ben Saunders in a left cross to ground and pound that happened in round two. That was his UFC debut. For Takashi Sato, before that he was a Grand Slam Pancrase champion. Pancrase is the Japanese regional scene. Obviously, Takashi Sato is Japanese. I couldn't figure by his name. <laughs> and um, so yeah, Takashi Sato, he's 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 seasoned. He's a seasoned veteran, I would say. And his three losses in his last five against Gunnar Nelson, Miguel Beza, and Bilal Muhammad. That's that's not horrible. They're not horrible. It's not bad to lose to those guys. I mean, the, of the three, I would say the the weakest is Miguel Beza, the weakest link out of those three. But that's recently too. 
when when Takashi Sato fought Miguel Beza, that was when he was M Miguel Beza was like prospecting, climbing up, like upward bound. But then, as of recently, I told you he's been on a skid. So, oh well, let's throw up these uh, cappers' names. But y'all, y'all know which way everybody's going on every one of these picks. That's why this is going to be quick. I'm not going to spend too much time on this show. I have better things to do with my time. But like I said, I didn't want all my research to go to shit. So I was doing it. Okay, take in Brian Battle. We've got Dev and Cell. Dev the dude, Cell the red. Always oh, doing live streams together on a cover. Like they do a watch along with the main, main card. And they every week they do early predictions. They did this prediction for this card a week before two, UFC 277. They did an early, early prediction. They always do their predictions a week in advance, before, like a full week before the event, which is good, but at the same time, it's kind of not because then you get fights that drop off or replacement fighters, and then they have to, you know, they didn't cover it. I'm just saying. Um, then we also have Blood Money. Cody from Blood Money is taking Brian Battle by decision. Interesting. The over-under might be a play on a lot of these. Um, two and a half rounds. The over two and a half is minus 180. If you think Brian Battle or Sa Takai Sato can end it, plus 150. Don't... One and a half times your uh, your bet, you get paid back if you want to go that route. Then we got Stat Diggers, Uncle Weezy, and DFS Brady, both on the side of Brian Battle. Brian Battle will be the bigger dude coming down a weight class, and he's already even if he, you know, he's already got nice three inch height, four inch reach advantage. Um, James Lynch, James Lynch did. Uh, interview. Uh, I don't know if he interviewed them both, but I know he definitely interviewed one. And he's saying submission. Check out James Lynch's. Uh, he does a whole. He's got a whole playlist of every fighter he's interviewed on every card that he that like all the fighters he's interviewed for this uh, UFC Vegas 59 card will be on that playlist. Check it out. Very good information. What's up? Yes, a lot of the fighters are famous. You get to talk to famous people? Not me. I don't do interviews. So, um, and finally we've got the Die Hard MMA podcast. Clint and Matthew Holt from Integrity, president, owner of Integrity Sports, which uh, checks out like betting lines. I, I don't know exactly what he does. He does, but he makes sure everything's on up and up with the with the gambling point of view, with the casinos and that. I I really, I don't know exactly what Integrity Sports does, but uh, I know he's a shark. He's a shark. He's a very smart better. And both of these guys, Matthew Holt is saying Brian Battle by a decision. So, I don't know. But they're both on the side of Brian. Making this a full hyper consensus. A full capper consensus is when all the cappers one side of the whiteboard. That's right. Did you throw any lucky pearls? You didn't even do it. Yes, I did. Do the dance. Do the dance. Throw some pearls. Throw some lucky pearls for those guys that are taking 10 to Kashi Sato. Um, so, yeah, I can't take... I. I'm going with the cap or consensus, I have to, but, but, there's a big but there. Fringe. Takashi Sato, 16 wins, and a lot of those wins are by knockout. Brian Battle, I mean, I don't think he's going to get knocked out, that's the thing. But you know what, at plus 225, my pick is Brian Battle. And I think he's probably going to win by uh, decision. I don't see. Uh, or you know what? Submission. Takashi Sato, of his five losses, four of them came by way of submission. So I'm going to say to cut, um, Brian Battle by submission. However, I will throw a hedge bet 
on Takashi Sato. Not a hedge bet, just a sprinkle on the on the underdog. You know, ten bucks would win me twenty two. Double my money because I think Takashi Sato does. It. He's got the more experience. He's training at a better gym. This is the contrarian contrarian views as I'm talking. Brian Battle should win, but Takashi Sato. Better faci training facility, in my opinion, opinion, um, and much more experience. And he does have a puncher's chance. He he's got knockout wins on his record. Look, he took care of uh, Chinny Jason Witt in 48 seconds. Took care of that Ben Saunders and ground and pound was at round two. Those are good. Those are good. Brian Battle, who's he beat? Ultimate Fighters. He's beat Treshawn Gore, Gilbert Urbina. This will be his first test against a UFC fighter that's established in the UFC. Look at Brian Battle's past records. I mean, he, in the amateurs, back in 2018, amateurs, they weren't in the UFC yet. He did beat Cody Brundage and Invicta Sangane, which is good. But you know, also, which shadows me, which is a big, big cloud over this, is that loss to Nicholas Martino, who is now four and six as a professional fighter. Four and six pro record, managed to beat Brian Battle in the first round by armbar. Just say, I don't think Sato's gonna get an armbar. His path to victory is a is a power punch, because but he, he loads up and he waits. He's not a volume puncher. Brian Battle punches like four strikes per minute, where Sato's roughly over one one point something, Brian Battle's at four point something. So the volume's definitely gonna go, and he's got the reach advantage. I, he's gonna, he's a point fighter, he's gonna win, if not by submission, by decision, but I'm taking sub because Sato did, of his five losses, four of them come by way of submission. But Sato, hedge bet him, I might even hedge bet him KO, because I would think that would be his only route to victory. He's not gonna sub Brian Battle, and I doubt he's gonna win a decision because Brian Battle is gonna get more significant strikes. Moving on, now we got the hugest line, widest line on the entire damn card. <laughs> We've got Terrence T-Rex McKinney, professional record of 12 and four, minus 1,000, taking on Eric Gonzalez, professional record 14 and 6 at plus 600 for the ghost pepper, Eric Gonzalez. Okay, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> I, I entertain myself with this. Okay, so let's talk about the favorite, minus 1,000 favorite, Terrence McKinney. Um, Terrence McKinney, and he's minus 1,000, yet he's coming off a loss. He lost to Drew Dober most recently, which was kind of like a weird, I think it was our early, like a early, it should have, it, it was stopped a little bit earlier than I would like to see. But um, Drew Dover did catch him with a knee to ground strikes in round one. But uh, yeah, it was kind of, I don't, I think it was stopped early. I just don't think Terrence McKinney was out of it yet. Um, by the way, MMA Fight Club, my good my good friend Manny, he has an interview with Terrence McKinney discussing that fight with Drew Dober. Check that out if you got the time. I'm not gonna put the link in the description, but check that out. Manny from MMA Fight Club interview Terrence McKinney. Okay, before that, Terrence McKinney what was on a, he's on a tear. Um, let's see, he's uh, he beat Faris Z Faras Ziam. Rear naked choke, round one. Before that, he had his UFC debut against Matt, the Steamroller Frivola, where he took him out in seven seconds. Seven seconds of round one. There's a punk band called Seven Seconds. That's, I'm dating myself now. That shows my age. Seven seconds of round one, Matt Frivola got ground and pound, left cross to ground and pound by Terrence McKinney. Good win there. Before that, he was in the LFA where he beat Michael Irizarry Ortiz. Punches. Round one. Yes, that's right. And before that, uh, he beat Tonino Gavinho. Head kick, 17 seconds. 
of round one. 17 seconds, round one. Those are both in the LFA, Legacy Fight Alliance. Legacy Fighting Alliance, that's what it stands for. LFA, pretty good deal. Um, Terrence McKinney trains out of Washington, Spokane, Washington at the Warrior Camp. And uh, on Instagram, he's spotted training with Saeed, um, Saeed Yokov Kakramanov. A lot of guys like the cock. <laughs> Saeed Yokov Kakramanov. He was, uh, Terrence McKinney was helping him get prepared for his fight he had a week or two ago. And the same, to same respects. Kak Ramanov training with Terrence McKinney in preparation for this fight against the Ghost Pepper, Eric Gonzalez. Now, let's look at it from a contrarian pick view. A contrarian view, we're gonna find out. We'll see if he's got a chance, okay? Minus 1,000, I think that's ridiculous. It's a lot of fight that's behind that line. A lot of, it started out with minus 900, which is already ridiculous. People are still throwing money on him. No value at all, but still, whatever it is, what it is, a lot of fight by, on uh, Terrence McKinney. He's, I think uh, all his fights have been, I don't think, he, has he seen the second round? I, he's not in his last five, he hasn't. I think all his fights, have, I think maybe he, once he's seen the second round in his 12 and four record. So the over under, over, is over one and a half is double your money. If you think Eric Gonzalez can, or Terrence McKinney, if, they, if these guys can survive each other for over one and a half rounds, that's like seven and a half minutes. If they can survive seven and a half minutes without getting knocked out, the both of them, you're gonna double your bet. Whatever you put, you wanna throw $10 on there, you get 20, you wanna put $100 on there, you get 200 smackers, just go over seven minutes. But let's talk about Eric Gonzalez. Eric Gonzalez, he has, he's coming off a USC debut against uh, the veteran Jim Miller. Jim Miller took him out in round two, 14 seconds of round two, which is not that great. Overhand left did it. But Jim Miller is low key, good man, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of Jim Miller for sure. He's uh, out of New Jersey. That's uh, right in my area of the world. Like I'm, I'm probably a three hour drive from Jim Miller's training facility, which is, I believe it's like his house or his next door to his house. It, you know, it's like the Miller, him and his brother have a family facility. But anyway, that was um, Eric Gonzalez's UFC debut. You gotta think the debut kind of got the jitters going against the veteran and Jim Miller. He held his own for the round one, but then round two, Jim Miller caught him with the overhand left. So, not horrible. Before that, he was in a multitude of uh, Mexican regional scenes. He was he beat uh, Samuel Alvarez via decision in LXF, that is a uh, Southern California regional scene. Um, I think it's like Baja and Mexico, you know, a lot of, a lot of uh, Mexican fighters in there. Then he would beat, um, or before that, he beat Oziel Rodriguez, also out of a Mexican regional scene called Naciones. But he beat this guy, TKO, round three. So this guy, durable, Eric Gonzalez, a little bit of durability to him. You know, he does he does make it longer. Um, before that, he beat Umberto, or no, he lost to Humberto Vendene. We'll just, just wait it out, it'll catch. Humberto Bandere in Combate by unanimous decision. There you go, again, going the distance with that. And uh, before that, he beat Milko Tokto. <laughs> what crazy name is that, Milko? Milko. I went to uh, the store the other day with Nora and uh, she was carrying my milk. And the, the cash register lady was like, oh, you got your milky for your daddy? <laughs> So he's like, really? She, she just, Nora just looked at me like, what? <laughs> yeah. So I'll, I'll, the past couple days, I just bust her butt saying, saying, can you go get daddy's milky? <laughs> it's just, but anyway, sorry to get off topic. That will happen in Combate as well. So Eric Gonzalez, uh, Mexican regional scene terror. He, he rips through most people. He, Humberto Bandone beat him, but 
Humberto Bandere is, uh, I've heard that name before, so I think he might, he might have moved out of the Mexican regional scene upward to like uh, maybe a LFA, PFL, or a Bellator. I'm not sure, but I would, I should have clicked it on Tapology, but I think he's still progressed as a mixed martial artist. Um, Eric Gonzalez, uh, one inch height advantage, same reach for these guys. He trains out of uh, Los Angeles, California, out of a place called Fight Science MMA uh, on Instagram. Good little gym, good little gym. Instagram, both of these guys, Terrence McKinney and Garrett Gonzalez, training hellbows. Hellbows. Boom. Boom. Hellbows. That's right. Terrence McKinney has a whole segment training hellbows. Uh, Eric Gonzalez has a whole little video segment training elbows is that like a do they know each other like they're getting ready to elbow the elbow the crap out of each other i don't know i don't know but it just i thought thought that was very coincidental um ghost peppers gym though this is now the contrarian side ghost peppers gym i there's no big names out of there but man do they love them some eric gonzalez the whole like and their his support there is top notch. There, I remember I, they showed a little thing and uh, and he's also Eric Gonzalez, also a father. brings his kid to to work. He brings his kid to to the gym and young kid. I think maybe two or three years old. Look like, but um, man, the dude's a good guy and uh, he's one to give one to. He'll take one to give one type fighter like. Uh, and that you don't want to do that against Terrence McKinney guy. You just don't want. You don't want to get Terrence McKinney will knock your ass out. But I'm doing the contrarian view. The uh, the fight science gym, um, fight science MMA facility. I saw he they had like uh, during training and everything. And he's if you look at Tepals, he's the only uh, like big. Not even a big name, but he's the only known name. He's definitely the only UFC fighter. And the other guys that are lit up, like that aren't Chuck Norris's on Tapology, are like regional scene, you know, combate and stuff. But uh, still much support from his gym. He's got his own personal doctor for uh, strength and conditioning coaching there. I like that. His whole gym support, I, I, there's a part on his Instagram where the whole like I don't know, maybe dozen of them, dozen fighters are all around. They're like, you know, Ghost Pepper on three, one, two, three, Ghost Pepper! And they're a big support. He, I don't know, that plus 600, plus 600, he's got a fighter's chance, this is a fight. Terrence McKinney, um, T-Rex, I, I, can he, if it does, if Eric Gonzalez can survive that first round, I mean, I, Terrence McKinney, has he, have we seen him in the later rounds? I haven't. Maybe you guys saw something I haven't. Maybe he's been there and I didn't go in, in depth amateur record, but um, I don't know. I just think, oh man, I just made that a lot worse. That's all right. I don't have to write nobody's name on this side <laughs> so, so I can keep that wet, whatever. So let's see what the cappers have to say. Surprise, surprise. It won't be a surprise. Everybody's on the side of Terrence Kinney. Die Hard MMA Podcast. Clint and Matt Holt all over Terrence McKinney. What? Well, you're going to have to wait. I'm in the middle of a video, Nor. I don't know what to tell you. Reset it. You got to turn it off and turn it back on. And wait. Oi. Yoy. Lynch. James Lynch. Also on the side of McKinney, uh, Stat Diggers, DFS saying round one knockout for McKinney. Makes sense. KO. Um, Blood Money Cody. Guess, guess what, guys? Blood Money says knockout. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Round one. Oh, go figure. Huh, that's weird. And Dev and Cell. 
draw the lock because this is a lock and at minus 1000 i sure the whole help sure the hell hope it is a lock minus 1000 it bet it's barely making this parlay the only reason it's making this parlay is i'm a man of my word and i parlay every every pick on my capital comparison shows put the cat down or she's gonna eat my food what she's gonna eat my food if i don't what do you mean no, she won't. Guard your food. I'm asking rid of the question. So this is a full heifer consensus. Don't even come over for the dance. Not worth it. Minus 1,000. Ridiculous. $1,000 to win 100. Ridiculous. $100 to win 10. Ridiculous. Do not do it. Stay right away from this fight. Of course, I do think Karen's McKinney will, should win. And on Tapology, I am going to take him by uh, knockout round one, because that's how it goes. But at plus 600, <laughs> plus money, plus money junkie, I'm addicted to the stuff. At a plus 600, I can't not throw $10 on it. 10, 10 will make it 60. Hell, that's fantastic. But, uh, and I will be rooting for Eric Gonzalez, Ghost Pepper. He's not going to, he probably, chances are he will not win, but there's no such thing as a lock in MMA. All the, all the locks, you know, I'm glad Devin Sell said it's locked, because a lot of times those locks really get broken open. They're not locks. But uh, yeah, minus 1,000. Draw a sad face. There you go. Thank you, Nora. Thank you for that. Minus 1,000 with a sad face. That's ridiculous. Even if you prop it out, I don't think you're gonna find, unless you get them by submission, maybe it'll go, but even by KO round one, that's probably still a negative number. Unreal. Finally, moving on, we got Mikhail Orlikseychek. Hussar is his nickname. Whoa. Taking on smiling Sam Alvey. That's right, Sam Alvey hasn't won a fight in, I don't know, However many years, I think uh, John Vellante was his last victory. I don't can't remember how long ago that thing. I want to say something like maybe 2018 or 19 or something. I don't I don't know. The last time Sam Helvey won a fight, he's he's on a, like a eight, seven or eight fight winless months? kid. However, 19 months. We're gonna talk about that when we get to him. I want to start with Michel. Oleg Sechek, no, 2019, which is years ago, four years ago. What? Yeah, Oleg Sechek. Yeah, Mikhail Oleg Sechek. He's coming off a loss to Dustin Jacoby by unanimous decision. Uh, before that, he beat uh, Shamil Gamzatov. Uppercut, round one, very good for the Polish fighter. Trading out of Enkos MMA, Poznan. That's a poll in Poland. He is now on Instagram. He is he is in the state side. He is in Vegas. I've seen him look at watching the fireworks at by the water fountains and stuff. And, fireworks. Yeah, fireworks. Uh, Michael Osechek, um before the what? Yeah, they can just take your information and use it and act like you. Shamil Gamzatov, uppercut round one. Before that, he beat uh, Modestus Bukakis. You guys know that guy. But he beat him by split decision. You know, so split decision means one of the refs picked uh, Bukakis there. He lost to Jimmy the Brute Crew. I don't know if that was Jimmy Crew with the mullet or Jimmy Crew pre-mullet, but Jimmy Crew beat him. And uh, he lost to OSP over the St. Crew by the St. Crew choke, a.k.a. the Von Flu choke. Round two, so he's like a two and three in his last five. Not that great, but a heavy minus 700 favorite. I don't, what am I doing this video for, Nor? Why am I even doing this? Why? Why am I wasting my time with this? Content has to be made though, I guess. Let's talk about Sam Alvey now. Smiling Sam Alvey. Sam Elvey, last five, 
all losses. He had one draw. Okay, let's let's do a breakdown one by one. Okay, Brendan Allen rear naked choked him round two. Legit loss. He should have lost that. Brandon Allen submitted him. Rear naked choke. Um, before that, a split decision to Wellington Terman. I think Sam Elvis should have won that fight. I think that was a robbery split decision for Wellington Terman. I watched it. That whole I I gave rounds. I gave him two two to one. Sam Alvey. Two rounds to one, but the judges went with Wellington Terman. Before that, he lost to Julian Marquez, rear naked choke, round two. Legit loss. Can't take that away. You know, that you can't give that to him. The draw against Da Unjung, robbery draw. That should have been a victory for Sam Alvey. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, all of them. Boo, boo, boo. Boo on all those lines. Um, yeah, so he did the Da Jung split decision, or draw, which it should not have been a draw. It should have been a victory for Sam Elvey, okay? So there's two robberies, two two wins he should have had. And um, before Da Jung, he, Ryan Spann, split decision. Once again, robbery. That one was totally, Ryan Spann had a bad weight cut, looked like crap on the scales. I had him pick to win. I think he should have won. He had, I think Sam Alvey should have won. I had Sam Alvey pick to win. I think he should have won. Um, if you ask Matt, Matthew Holt on the Die Hard MMA podcast, if there was 20 seconds left of that fight, he would have knocked Ryan Spann out. Ryan Spann got the victory and looked shocked. He's like, when they raised his hands, he was like, oh, damn, I won? Yeah, because you fought Sam Alvey. The poor dude, Sam Alvey. All these robberies. Three. That's three. The draw of the Jiao and Jung. The split decision one determined split decision is Brian Spann. All three of those should have been W's. W's for Smile and Sam Alvey in his last five. But yet, all losses. And Sam Alvey here does have a two inch height advantage and a one and a half inch reach advantage. He trains out of fight or team quest. Yep, yep. You forgot this one. Plus 450 for that one. So, um, I guess uh, from rumor has it, win or lose, this is Sam Alvey's last fight. He's gonna, I believe he's gonna hang, he's gonna leave his gloves in the ring. Win or lose, I pray, I hope Sam Alvey go, leaves the UFC with a victory, and that's my contrarian take on this fight. However, <laughs> I do think Mikhail Oleksiejczyk probably is a better fighter. Sam Elvey relies on counter punching. That's his whole his whole thing is he, he waits for you to attack and then he counter punches for, with his back against the cage and that's his how he goes for the victory. It's a battle. Battle, I know. And they technically are battling. They are technically battling, but his nickname is Pooh Bear. <laughs> Yeah, I know, that's what I say. Olesay check is younger. Ooh. Wrong marker. He's younger at 27. Sam Alvey is 36. Oh, this marker's fat and smudgy. I got I got it. I got it. This one's perfect. So um, let's throw all these uh, names up here. Minus 700, Oleg Sejcik. We've got Dat Diggers. Huh, weird taking Oleg Sejcik. Devin Sell, weird. Everybody on the side of <laughs> Oleg Sejcik. Um, Blood Money. At least he's given a method and round KO round one. I don't believe it. I don't believe that. Um, die Hard on a podcast. Even Clint, who loves Sam Alvey, is going against him in this what fight. Does that mean? What? A lock. That's a lock. Ad lock. That's Dev and Cell's lock. Of one of them. they have like four locks on this card. That's one of them. That's their biggest lock because he's minus 1,000. 
Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. just just make exactly just thinking about it makes you want to vomit. And finally, James Lynch also on the side of Olasechuk making it a full Jeffer consensus. And I too have to go with Hussar. He just but I'm not to, for me, I'm not confident with it at all. I will throw parlay with all these favorites, but I'm going to hedge back all these underdogs as well. Sam Alvey, I'm rooting for you, buddy. I'm pulling for you. But I'll say Chuck will probably win by a robbery. Um, a robbery decision. Oh man, what's the over? Over is minus 165. Over one and a half is minus 165. The under is plus money, but uh, see what let's see what the over is on two and a half. Maybe that might be a play. Sam Elby is he is he's pretty durable. He doesn't like his last aside from getting rear naked choke, they're all they're all going to decision. And he gets robbed when it goes to decision. I don't think anything's gonna change. But being that this is his last fight in the UFC, maybe they will give him the nod. That's why I'm giving him the hedge bet. That's my contrarian take, take on that fight. Playing the betters advocate. I'm going, I'm taking old say check on topology, but my money's going with Sam Alvey. Smiling Sam, let's go. I got your back, bro. I'm gonna even, I'll double my bet. I'm gonna, instead of a sprinkle of $10, I'm gonna throw $20 on that, ma making me $90. If I bet 20, it'll make me 90. That's right. So Sam Alvey is my hedge, hedge this one. So to recap, wow, with the force. Time check, recap. <laughs> to recap, I've got Brian Battle submitting Takashi Sato. However, I will make a uh, sprinkle, scratch off ticket on Takashi Sato. Matter of fact, I already did, guys. I already did. I put 10 bucks on all these underdogs already. On Battle. As soon as I, when I was breaking down the show, I'm like, you gotta be kidding me with these odds. I'm plus money junkie. It's, it's, it's my drug. I gotta do it. Then, um,. I've got Terrence McKinney with the rest of the world, except for the guys that fight science MMA in Cal Los Angeles, California. Except those guys. Everybody taking McKinney. However, hedge it. I'm gonna at plus 600. I gotta make a play. Already did. Already placed it. And finally, I got Old Sechek winning a robbery decision. But because it's uh, Sam Alvey's last fight, win or lose, I'm hoping he gets the nod in this this case and doesn't get robbed this decision and comes out victorious at plus 450. And this one, I put 10 bucks hedging them, but I will double that up and I'll throw another $10 on top of that so I, so I gain $90 out of my $20 gamble if he happens to win. But, um, of course, I'm gonna parlay the favorites. And just for shits and giggles, I parlayed the underdogs and it's like plus, it was plus 1,600 or something ridiculous. No, even more than that. My, it's a, my $10 three leg parlay will pay out $1,200. So what is that, 12, 12 what is that, 12? I don't, I don't even know what the ten dollars to win a thousand something, twelve hundred out, ten to win twelve hundred. What is that? Plus plus twelve thousand. Is that how that works? Yeah, plus twelve thousand. Anyway, crazy, crazy odds. Add them up. <laughs> crazy odds. But yeah, it makes sense. You add them up. So anyway, there you have that. Gather the info, place those bets, and cash those. Yes. Thanks for watching this ridiculous show that I shouldn't have even done. Yes.
<laughs> but I did I did my homework and research, so I had to do the show. Had to put the content out there. I appreciate you guys watching. Please go ahead and back back up some of these. I I don't care. I know the locks. Everybody knows the locks. In the comments, put some support behind one of these underdogs. You know, support their cause. It's a underdog cause. But uh, there you have that. Thanks for watching. Good luck on your bets, and I'll see you tomorrow. We're going to get into some select fights entering into the main card. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.